Hey, welcome to Wednesdays in the Word. I'm Dr. Stan, and so honored to be able to come and share some thoughts with you on this Wednesday from the Word of God. Hey, you know, one of the things I get to do uh, on a consistent basis because of the graciousness of the Frequency Church in Fontana, California, is I get to do a series for them uh, each year. And this year, I feel felt from the Lord that I was to do a series on just the foundations, apostolic slash prophetic foundations. And one of the things that has motivated me to do that is because of all of the crazy stuff that seems to be going on in the body of Christ in terms of the prophetic and apostolic and, you know, what church life is supposed to be like. And so I thought, you know, look, why don't we take a look again at things that really matter, at really the things that are foundational. And so uh, I'm so grateful that the church is willing to allow me to practice my messages on them at frequency. We'll eventually turn it probably into another book or booklet. But uh, anyway, I wanted to just share kind of the overview of that. And I may launch a few messages over the next few weeks based upon what I'm studying in terms of these foundations. But the, the key scripture I'm looking at, oh, by the way, remember, you can find more information about what we're doing, you know, at uh, drstandycoven.org or booksbyvision.org, vision.edu. And uh, hey, if, you, if you're watching this on Facebook, you know, put a little like down there, maybe share it with some friends. We'd really be uh, so grateful if you would. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at Acts chapter 3. And uh, I'm going to actually read starting in verse 11 to kind of get at some context here. And then we're going to focus on verses 19 to 21. So in uh, verse 11 it says, And while uh, he was clinging to Peter and John, this is the man that had been healed, uh, all the people ran together to them at the so-called portico of Solomon, full of amazement. Great advertising strategy. Heal a few people, open some blind eyes. Great way to go. But when Peter saw this, he replied to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you gaze at us as if by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, the one whom you delivered up and disowned in the presence of Pilate. That's not a very nice way to say that, Peter. I mean, they might feel condemned and criticized. You should be a little more politically correct when you say these things. Anyway, when he had decided to release him, but you disowned the Holy One and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. But put to death the Prince of Life, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. And on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know, and the faith, faith which comes through him has given him his perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance, just as your rulers did also. But the things which God announced beforehand by the mouth of all the prophets... And, and this and his Christ should suffer, and he has fulfilled. Now, you know, when, the, when we talk about the church, it, 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 the Bible says that the church, if you will, is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And it's really apostolic revelation and the prophetic foundation, which is the fulfillment, ultimately, of prophecy from the Old Testament. The fulfillment is in Christ. That's the foundation on which we're to build. Now, Peter then finishes this up with, Repent, therefore, and return, that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus, the Christ appointed for you, whom heaven must receive, until the period of restoration of all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. It goes on from there. But I want to just touch on uh, just a few points uh, 
in this very brief Wednesday in the Word. So after you know, Peter confronts this community, <clears throat> primarily they're all Jewish believers or unbelievers at this point, but he confronts them, <coughs> excuse me, um, with the truth that they were a part of Christ's death, burial, and, uh, but the resurrection has come and, and now healing has been released because the Holy Spirit's been poured out upon the apostles. And uh, here this man, uh, you know, that had been begging forever. I mean, he couldn't walk. And I mean, you know, anyway, he miraculously healed. And so Peter's preaching this, not a huge, great sermon, not a homiletical masterpiece, but a pretty good message, obviously under the anointing of Holy Spirit. And then he calls them to action. You know, one of the things I... I find often in church life today is that we are giving a lot of sermons. We're letting people know what the problems are. We're even suggesting some things that need to change. But many times we're reluctant as leaders to call people to action. And Peter is not shy about saying, listen, in light of all that's happened, in light of all that you know to be true, there's some, a decision that you need to make. And really, repentance is not an evil word. It's not a bad word. It's a good word. It means, obviously, and, and, and most obviously, to change your thinking. In other words, to, to stop thinking in the way that you used to think, which isn't working for you. The stinking thinking of life is not working, and therefore, an adjustment is needed. That's all Peter is saying is listen, you guys have thought that if you follow the law, if you do everything according to the religious traditions that you have been taught, that that is going to be sufficient for you to be able to come into the presence of God, find God's favor, and ultimately make heaven your home. But you were mistaken. That is not what God's intention is. In fact, if you continue down the same road that you've been going, you're just going to keep having the same issues happen over and over again. And you're not going to fulfill that which is your hope or your desire. So you've got to repent. Because if you repent and allow your sin, now again, sin, uh, we can apply it to the sin nature if you want, but, but I would like to apply this more to how we miss the mark, how we try in our own strength to do things and make things happen, but it doesn't seem to be working out. So if we repent, Lord, help me to understand, help me to know what I need to change in my thinking so that the sin can be washed away. In other words, I'll be, I'll be set free, I'll be made clean, I, I can see things clearly so that I can hit the mark that I need to hit, and so that the times of refreshing may come from the Lord. I mean, I believe with all of my heart that God wants to, in this day, in this time, in the midst of the pandemic that's still going on, God wants to refresh His church. He wants to bring us to the place of where His righteousness, peace, and joy permeate our lives. I mean, I know that's what you want. It's what I want. It's what we need. And we know that God is going to continue to bring times and times of refreshing, especially as we live a repentive lifestyle. He'll continue to bring that to us until all enemies are made the footstool of our Lord, until the final appearing of Christ occurs. I mean, he's in heaven, and we are seated with him in the heavenlies. We're far above principalities and powers and workers of darkness. I mean, we are, we are in the triumph of God. That is who we are. That's what we're about. But, you know, right now we need times of refreshing. And if you're not experiencing the refreshing of God, it may be because you're seeing things a little bit wrong. Or maybe you're, you're doing things, not necessarily terrible, sinful things, but things that are just not working anymore. And if that be the case, hey, let's, let's rejoice that God is moving wherever he's moving, and let's, let's 
be willing to repent, to change our thinking, which will lead to a change of life, that will bring the cleansing of God, it will bring the refreshing of God, knowing that in the fullness of time, all will be well because of the grace of God. You know, the foundation that Peter was trying to lay even in that day was a foundation that combined the prophetic promises fulfilled in Christ and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that now says we must go make disciples and build the church that Jesus is building in and through us. Well, hey, I'm just... Uh, Hopeful that these little words, brief words, will inspire you, encourage you. Take a look at yourself, but also take a look at your church. And if there's times of refreshing that's needed, be willing to say, Lord, help me to see where I'm missing the boat and make the repentance necessary so that times of refreshing will come. Help me, Lord, to see exactly how to build on the foundation of the prophetic and on the apostolic so that we can build strong for the sake of, of your kingdom. Hey, until next Wednesday, God bless.